Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you of Leela Chess against Stockfish 6. Let's have a look. So this is part of John D's Formatic Gauntlet Challenge. So we have here the King's Gambit being played by Leela Zero. So this was a great opening for, uh, representative of the Romantic era of chess. So players like Paul Morphy in the past had fantastic games with the King's Gambit. So e takes f4, we have uh, bishop c4. The mo most usual is knight f3. This is another interesting move, way of treating the gambit. We have d5, bishop takes, queen h4 check, king f1, knight f6. Knight f3, the queen goes to h6. Knight c3, white well, has a certain compensation in this particular Variation the way blacks played it, blacks played it to try and cling on. It seems to that pawn. So bishop e7 is played. We have d4, black castles. E5, knight g4, bishop b3, c6. Uh, it's not that much point to play knight e3 check here this could be taken this position here is fine for white white actually has a quite good advantage there so uh, we have c6 queen e2 knight a6 h3 with no threat at the moment because of the pinned pawn to the rook but as soon as the king moves the g1 they'll be unpinning the pawn knight c7 knight d1 ready to challenge the e3 square, very interesting move actually, because also it means c4 becomes possible. And maybe to roll the center a bit forward. Knight d5, king g1, so this is now unpinning this pawn, meaning this threat is now activated. So this knight has to go somewhere, it hasn't got too many squares to go to. We see knight g e3, and it's here that leader plays. What would you play as white in this position? If I give you five seconds. Okay, Leela plays c4, and this is a little bit like when Nakamura played Michael Adams with a King's Gambit. He played for c4 and a strong center, and managed to win this rare King's Gambit adventure game uh, he had. So that was at Super GM level, not so long ago. It's on the channel. I'll, I'll give a link to it as well. Okay, so, um, so anyway, c4, we have knight takes d1. C takes d5, and the point here is, why now, after knight e3, getting time to snap on e3 and play d6, so very aggressive pawns. Bishop d8, king h2 now is played. So the rooks are now connected, hello, hello. Bishop g4, rook h e1, so this pawn is very vulnerable. Check, king h1. Bishop takes f3. This simplification now is interesting. Black is holding on to the pawn for a bit with bishop g5. So we have opposite colored bishops, but this g file might be dangerous as well. Rook g1, bishop f4, and now we see rook g4 prompting g5. Perhaps if the bishop moves back, uh, f4 is possible. And then to round up that pawn. So we see g5, h4. We see h6, hg, hg, rook ag1, threatening, rook takes f4. King h7, unpinning. Uh, we have now king g2. It would be terrible to take on f4 here. Because uh, this pawn is also dangerous on e3. This position, for example, bang, e2. Black has a big advantage. Uh, you know, rook g1, rook g8, yeah. Well, it's got to tread a bit carefully here, clearly. So, king g2 is played. This pawn can be kept under lock and key uh, in various ways now. Uh, so, we see f5, though. Isn't that just winning in exchange? Was this a mistake by Leela? Uh, so this ki this king g2 here prompts f5. It actually asks for f5. 
Okay, so is this a mistake or not? Well, of course, white can consider the ampersand, but that breaks up the pawns. So what would you play here? I hope you can guess Leela's move. If I give you five seconds. Okay. Yeah, just sack the exchange. Rook takes f4. This mass of pawns, look at this mass of pawns over here. As long as black pawns are not too dangerous. King f1 helps protect against their advance. G8 is under control here from that bishop. We see rook ad8. Bishop e6. So black is tied down. Rook d8. Check. Check. And bishop drops back. There's a bit of toying there. Back to this position. Now bishop c4. a5. King e2. Rook d7. Check. And now here rook h4. With the threat of clearly taking. Or is it? Is it? No, it's not here. This would be very silly. It's not taken. If taking, then king g5. <laughs> Black has a big advantage after munching the rook. Uh, so, actually, Leela plays a4. Rook d8. Rook drops back. Rook f8. Check. King h6. Bishop e6. So is progress being made? Now this is the start of an aggressive king maneuver. King h5. We see king d3. But white also, Lila also, wants to be very aggressive here with the king. If the king can step up to c5 and then d7, king d6, the king will be herding the most dangerous pass pawn in white's position. King h6. d7. So this plan is afoot. D6 has now been vacated with D7 for the king to step in, potentially. King H5, King C4, black plays King H4 now. If black tries to stop this King C5, then D5 breaks through anyway. So like this, for example, is a variation where white's getting to that key spot and the past pawns are just enormous here. So yeah, king h4. This is already fantastic for white, this position. So the king steps into d6. Rook f1. b5, that's taken. And now bishop d5 protects f3 as well as allowing e6 now. King g3. e6, yeah, the pass pawns are absolutely powerful now. All powerful and winning here. e2, rook c1. King f2, e7. White's just winning now. a4, king c7. Even more powerful than just taking a rook. Rook b8. And now taking a rook. Relieving both rooks of duty now, taking them off the board. King e3, and the game ended here. Uh, White's just big material up, clearly. An example, bishop c6. Uh, White's just going to mop up. Whatever happens, or, or or just taking here, and then this d pawn would be winning if e won. So yeah, a nice king's gambit game, and it had some interesting elements thrown into the mix. Pass pawn potential again thrown into the mix. This is something which Leela is definitely throwing in as an ingredient uh, to what seems to be like sometimes attacking positions. Uh, and the King's Gambit does offer, you know, that potential for sometimes central pawn mobility, as this game demonstrated. So I hope you found it interesting. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.